there. Give myself a hand so I don't fall apart up here. You know the term imposter syndrome? As much as you deny it, sometimes it hits you like, oh my gosh, am I really ready? Am I really have everything together? So yes, I do. So we're going to have a fun time uh, this morning. And I want to really say thank you for attending this session. Um, at heart and by trade, I'm an elementary PE teacher. Go figure, yeah. I teach kindergarten through fifth grade PE and technology. So I have the two favoritest classes at my school. <laughs> right. So this is, my, this is going into my 29th year teaching. And um, also in higher education, where the young lady said, I, I created a program called Educational Technology, Social Media, and STEM. And that's a real popular class, too, because I don't give any assessments. I have no tests. Everything is hands-on, and everything is interactive. So this session, every time I like to do one, is going to be an interactive session. You're going to be involved in something. So whether I ask you a question, but you're going to ask me questions when I'm done, because when I get on a roll, it's kind of like, let's go. Let's get this done. But um, thank you for attending this session. It is Strategies Beyond SEO and Google to Build Your Brand. So we're going to start off. Everybody raise your hand if you know what SEO is. Very good. Raise your hand if you don't know what SEO is. Oh, good job. So give yourselves a hand. Everybody knows what SEO is. OK, that's a good start. Uh, raise your hand if you have a brand. Who has a brand? OK. OK, good. And raise your hand if you don't have a brand. OK, put your hand down. All right, everybody raise your hand. So everybody in here, you do have a brand. You just may not know what it is. So at the conclusion of this session, hopefully you'll know what your brand is and how to apply SEO in here. So I'm not an SEO expert, OK? I'm not a branding expert. But what I like to do is encourage and motivate and inspire people to find out how to integrate SEO and how to integrate their brand with the SEO and also how to use and manipulate Google, because they do that with our data all the time anyway. So we just give it right back to them. Everybody in here is awesome in some capacity in some way. So these are just a couple of pictures um, from things that Aida and, I have done in the, Aida and I have done in the community. We spoke at WordCamp Miami. That was awesome, WordCamp. Um, again, I'm, I'm involved in education. I love Marvel Comics, so I got Captain America Shield. Um, that picture in the middle was, I believe, WordCamp Atlanta, even though we have the Miami t-shirt on. Um, I was fortunate enough to participate with um, TEDx with Florida State College in Jacksonville as their social media visionary community liaison. I know that's a lot, but it allows me to be engaged in the community. Um, this is one of my favorites, Coach Jackson. That's a rendition of how students see me. So it's really pretty cute and cool when they make a drawing of you. And then I'm a social media person for my church. So all this is ingrained into building a brand, being involved in the community, and being active. Needless to say, all of this doesn't really mean anything unless you can effectively oh, did this fade out? apply it. You have to be able to apply it to something, whether you apply it to your brand or what you're doing in the community. Okay? Oh, is that? Oh, there we go. I'll do it this way. Apply it to the community. How's that? Okay. How's that? Okay, so we'll move on. Oh, I have a quiz for you. Who can tell us who this guy is? Wapu. Did y'all know that? Did y'all know that was Wapu? He's very popular, internationally known. Get as many Wapus as possible because they're very good conversation pieces. Grow higher. Everybody put one hand up. Give yourself a pat on the back and say, good job, me. One you got up this morning and actually ate breakfast or drank coffee or juice and got in your car or walked and came here this morning. So that was very good. So you should be proud of yourself. Two, you are sitting in another session, even though it's kind of cool and kind of cold in here. But hey, whatever. We can't control the climate. So go higher. To grow higher, you have to think of strategies and promote yourself in a fashion and in a way that you can determine how you can take your brand higher. And everybody may have something different, some different strategies, some different concepts to do that. But when you have a business, raise your hand if you have a business. You want your business to grow higher. Raise your hand if you have a business and you want to make money. Ah, oh, cool, awesome. 
Okay, raise your hand if you don't have a business, but you still want to make money. <laughs> awesome. So everybody has a strategy to first want to make some money and take that money and apply it to whatever you want to do with it. So as we're all working to gain knowledge, and I learned a little bits and pieces from when Aida and I, we went to Word Camp San Jose in Costa Rica, a beautiful place. If y'all ever have an opportunity, take the time to go there either on vacation or word camp because it's a very valuable experience. Okay. I am being told, let's see. Let's try this again. All right, how's that? Is that better? Okay. Oh, cool, here we go. Think CC. What is CC? Raise your hand if you know what CC is. What's CC? Content creator. Where did you get that from? Oh, it's on the slide. Don't make things complicated. Keep them as easy as possible. You heard the term KISS. Keep it simple. And what's the other one? Silly. Silly. Okay. Don't make it more complicated than it has to be because that creates frustration. So as we're going through the slides, I have little bits and pieces of information. All of us are in a digital environment. Okay. It's all around us. So whatever type of information you post online, it's a representation of you and your brand. So I like to do this also. Everybody take out your phones. And yeah, I'm a teacher, but I'm not going to take it from you. Take out your phone. Hold your phone up. Repeat after me. You ready? OK, this can be my best friend or my worst enemy. So remember that when you're talking to your kids and grandkids and nieces and nephews. Because your content that you post on your phone defines who you are and who your business is. There used to be a time where you can separate your personal life from your business life or your entrep entrepreneurial life or your brand. But today, everything is blended and meshed. You may have your personal Facebook page, but you may have your business Facebook page. But something along the line it's going to come together in some kind of way. So you really have to be careful of how your brand is shown on either or both platforms. So one of the interesting things about the young people today, their thought process is, well, if I post something inappropriate or I get in trouble, I'll just delete it and take it off. But does it actually go away? No, it's always there. So you have to be careful of not just what you post, but where you post. I'm going to give somebody a task. I need one volunteer, and I'm not going to tell you what I want you to do. Any vo volunteer, give him a hand. OK, and your name is? Steve. Steve, this is Steve. OK, so Steve, I have, I have a quick question for you. Yes, sir. Can you define SEO in a way that everybody here can understand it? Search engine optimization, and my description is how Google determines who gets to be, to stay on page one, okay. and the algorithm that Google uses to determine who gets to be on page one, and the algorithm is very, very complex with about 200 some odd moving parts. Okay. What do okay. you think about that? That was good. How's that sound? Okay. That sound good? Okay. So keep that information in the back of your mind as we go through the slides. So we know how important SEO is, and we know how valuable Google is. But think about different things that you can apply to that and how advanced technology is. So it took 38 years for 50 million users or 50 million people to access the radio. Now, I'm not old enough to remember when radio started, but I remember that at certain times at night, certain radio stations would go off the air. OK, so most of us probably remember that. Also, with um, television, it took 13 years for 50 million users to access television. So I'm dating myself. So I remember when I was little, at 12 o'clock, the little symbol would come up, and then it would go, boo. It's like, OK, time to go to bed. So remember that. Also, it took four years for 50 million users to access the internet. So you see the time differences that are ongoing as the advances of technology. So the important knowledge factor to that is keep up with the level of technology and how it changes so you can change with it. That doesn't mean you have to integrate every concept, every platform, every digital tool, but find out which ones promote you, your business, and your brand, and learn as much about them as possible so you can effectively apply the strategies. If you still struggle, 
Don't be scared to collaborate and cooperate with someone that actually has those skills. So one of the things I like to share is, if you have business cards, and we've been here for two days, when we leave this afternoon or whenever you're going back home, your pockets or your purses or your wallets should be empty of your business cards and filled up with other people's business cards. Because it's more important to collaborate than to compete because that way you're sharing information. Okay, everybody has a reason why they should attend a word camp, and I just came up with some ideas, and uh, Aida contributed to some ideas also because as an artist, she thinks differently than I do as a non-artist person. So I respect people that are in the arts because there's this left ring, right thing kind of thing going on. Who in here develops web pages? Okay. Have you ever thought about collaborating with someone that is in the arts to have a different perspective of what you're designing, what you're building? And the reason I say that is, and correct me if I'm wrong, the majority of people that may be viewing your content are young ladies and women. And their concept of content is a little bit different than us guys. Okay, because they want to see the pictures, they want to see the information up there displayed in a different way than as a, as a, than as a guy would see it. Um, Steve Ehrman was talking about the different things when he's posting online about cars and engines and that kind of cool stuff. That goes to a different demographic. So sometimes you have to adapt your branding, your information to diverse demographics around you because you still want to build up your following, you still want to build up your clientele, and you want to attract and draw people to your attention. So building your credibility, which is very important, and to help you do that, strategies and innovation is really important. What strategies are you using? Are you innovative in how you apply the different strategies and the different types of technology? Your integrity. Integrity is very important. All we have to do is talk about House of Representatives, Congress, Presidency, yada, 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 and we can keep going on and on because everybody has an opinion. But be honest and define your principles. What are your principles and what are you doing? What are your principles in your brand? Practice ethics and integrity. And that's a good conversation because as business people, and as those, as we are digital content creators, people trust our brand. Our brand is a way of showing people that you can trust us with what we're giving you. And there's a lot of information out there about false advertisements and false news reports. So we have to be diligent in what we're doing to create content that promotes and helps people. What is your intent? Define your intent and address the perceptions. That's another important thing about the perception. Because depending on who you are, when you walk through that door, you can walk in here and think, oh, yeah, this is a tech conference, and they're learning about why you should attend WordCamp. That's the first impression they may get. Why? But we already know why we're here, because we already have a concept when we paid our money to attend. OK, one, we know we're going to get a great lunch. Two, we know it's going to be an awesome after party. And last night was really cool. It was really fun. Three, the perception is we're going to meet some nice, cool, fun, exciting, and as the kids say, some dope and lit people that are very smart. And I always love talking to young people, especially the elementary kids, because when you have a third grader that comes up to you and says, Coach Jackson, I'm following you on your YouTube channel, that kind of like sets off some alarms and thoughts like, okay, if this young person is following me, what type of content am I creating and posting online that would that they would be engaged with. So not only are they following me, but their friends and their parents. So even though a teacher and a business owner, my personal life is wrapped up also with my business life. So when I come to WordCamp, I have to be careful of the type of information that I post. Not to say that anything is, is wrong with it, but how does that promote or excite people to be more involved ethically and uh, intelligently with technology? Your competency. Everybody has a level of competency in what we're doing. So the more you learn, the more you grow, the more you grow, the more you can adapt and use the information that we get here. So if I gave us like 30 seconds, and we're going to do a little practice, practice session for like 30 seconds, the person to your right, this is what you're going to do. You are going to shake their hand. You're going to introduce yourself, 
and you're going to give them one piece of technical information that you learned since you've been here. So that way you're cross-sharing content and information and maybe a strategy. And then that blossoms into a thought in your mind. Of, maybe I can blog on that. Maybe I can collaborate with that person. Or that could be a business idea. So that allows you early in the morning to get the synapses going and get your ears open a little bit more and engage in just a conversation. Because it doesn't do you any good to come to an awesome conference like this and not engage or talk to somebody and not to share some type of information. Okay, so when I say go, we're gonna give you like about 30 seconds. You're gonna tell the person your first and last name and you're going to share some type of technical or blog information or web development or something that you learned while here at WordCamp. All right, y'all ready? Okay, ready, go. Good job. Okay, so close it up. And five, four, three, two, one. Good job. Give yourselves a hand. Now, this is what I observed, which was very good. One, people got up. People shook hands, people were engaged in conversation, but not only that, people were like looking at each other and actually talking to each other, looking eye to eye. And one of the important things is as business owners and people who have, we have a brand and we strategically use it and apply it, it can't all go through SEO and it cannot all go through Google. You have to get out and engage with the community, talk to people, be involved and participate in your community in some kind of form or fashion. I learned a long time ago, um, sitting on a couple of boards, that no matter where you go, you should always have your business cards because it could just take that one opportunity where you're talking to somebody and you don't have a business card, but then you want to put all that information in your phone when a business card can save you time and energy and money because you could be in Walmart and overhear a conversation, somebody struggling with technology, or have a tech idea, or want to start a tech business that matches what you're doing, and that's sometimes that's a unique and one-time opportunity that you have to be prepared for. And using those skills and using that knowledge that you shared allows you, when you go out those doors to go home to your respective places, can apply that information to help you grow and expand what you're doing. Also, some people got up and stood up and walked around. Some people sat, sat in your seats. It really didn't really matter whether you're mobile or not. It was the fact that you did share information. You got away from the technology. Because trying to look at technology and then listen to somebody, something gets lost in the translation. And everybody learns differently. So creating the right brand and strategically marketing it. We always have to have that type of marketing strategy. The best way to market your brand and what you're doing is to get out in the community and get involved in something. Whether it's a Boys and Girls Club, whether it's a nonprofit organization, whether it's you're volunteering, or whether you're sponsoring, or whatever, or whether your blogs are promoting something. Use those opportunities to promote activity and engage people. Um, Aida and I, uh, find out what's going on in, um, on the continent of Africa. They're having word camp, uh, word camp conferences as well. And what we like to do is find out educators that would like to go but don't have the resources to go. So occasionally we'll sponsor teachers um, to go to word camps because they take that knowledge and they apply it in their classrooms. 
So even locally or globally, it's a good idea to use SEO and Google to build what you're doing, but promote what you're doing out beyond your community. Don't throw shade on SEO nor Google. All of us at one time have issues with what they're doing, but use it to the best of your advantage. Use it to promote what you're doing, all right? Your brand. Everybody in here, remember, you have a brand. If you don't know what your brand is now, you have to develop it, that concept of what it is. Consider your influences and in offering your products and services. All of us have something we can offer to somebody, somewhere, a product, a service, some information, an idea. You just sat down there and you just talked and shared information. That is very valuable. Before you leave here, whether this session or other sessions, make sure you have somebody else's business card. If you didn't bring business cards with you the next time you come to a work camp, make sure you do have business cards. Whether you get the paper from Walmart and just make something yourself, or you go online, or someone in here can offer to make you business cards. Take that opportunity to do that. Think what influence you have on marketing products and services that are beyond you. There's nothing wrong with emailing somebody, a business and saying, hey, I'm going to word camps. Would you mind sponsoring me? I can promote your service or your business. You never know. They might say, yeah, they may pay for the whole trip because the opportunities are endless, but you have to continue to try and apply it. What influences in your content creation and digital innovation? All of us are digital innovators. When you post stuff online, you're an innovator because you're posting something that nobody else is posting. Why? Because it's coming from you. Okay, why do you think sometimes kids jump into pictures and they want to photobomb? Because they want to be recognized, they want to be seen with different people. And now more, now more times than not, kids will jump into a picture just to make a presence, just for somebody to see them. Kids will take pictures in front of cars, knowing that's not their car, and stand there like it's their car. Or they'll be in front of a big old house, a mansion, knowing they don't live in that house, but they want a picture in front of that house because it represents potentially future aspirations. If you want to be a business owner, hang out with business owners. Take pictures with business owners. You want to be an organizer, take a picture with a big, uh, um, an organizer work camp. If you want to be a volunteer, do something to volunteer and take pictures with volunteers. Use those digital tools to promote what you, want to, what you would like to do and apply it. Your perception, what perceptions do these create about you, your business, and your services? I'm gonna ask you for 15 seconds to think about two things and see if they apply to each other. One is, what is your perception about what you do online? And the other one is, what do you think other people's perception is about what you do online? So that's two different concepts. Your homework assignment is real simple. At the end of WordCamp, within a week, find out from either your client, your family, somebody that'll be open and honest about, that knows what you're doing and what you're trying to accomplish, what their perception is of what you're doing and see if it's similar or different. Because then that way you can learn that, okay, my perception or my idea of the type of content I'm creating, whether it matches what you want it to do or whether it doesn't match at all. Okay? So you got 15 seconds. One, think about your perception of what you're creating and then think about a perception what other people may think you have. So this is like our quiet time. Okay, go. Okay. Anybody want to share what they think their perception of their content is? Yes, ma'am. Uh, we do a tax deductible Okay. Okay, it's for sole survival. So I, I, I think we do both. Okay. That's my perception. That's your perception. Okay. Um, has anyone ever told you something different about what they perceived in casual conversation? Okay. It might not be honest with you, but you okay. know. Okay. All right. Did you have your? Yeah, I was going to share. Uh, my wife has a medical practice, family medical practice, 
Okay. Fix them. Okay. And the perception the doctor has is that the patient should be able to fix themselves. Okay. And it's, it's, it's quite a difference between the two perceptions. Right. How do you make that work? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Can you just repeat for me the last two things? I actually, I'll let, I'll let you do it. Here. She wants you to repeat what you said. Oh, certainly. Uh, it, in a medical practice in particular, uh, my wife has a medical practice. I have the challenge to make a website that makes the two perceptions work. What we discover is the perception of most people is that the doctor can fix them. They would mm -hmm. prefer that to be done with a pill. The doctor's perception is that we will never solve this problem without the patient's change of lifestyle. The pill will be in, an interesting side to it, and it, mm -hmm. it, it will be humorous to see what happens. But not much, usually. Okay, thank you. All right, appreciate it. Thank you all very much. Give them a hand. <laughs> and I'll just use this as an example. I'm going to pick on him one more time. Steve was talking about, hey, Steve. Hello. Yesterday, his video presentation was very good, and I learned so much that I'm motivated to apply more video but I need to make sure that I apply video in the appropriate and right way instead of just taking video of myself doing crazy nonsense stuff and then posting online. What strategies can I use in video from what he taught to build my brand? So this afternoon, he's gonna have one on photography. So rest assured, I'm gonna be there to learn to be a better photographer, whether I have to go out and buy a camera or actually use my phone. I'll give you that 20 bucks later. Oh, thank you, appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> so the concept is there to apply the knowledge. All right, we, are, we, we know about Elon Musk, and he had a, a wonderful quote uh, about building your brand and applying perception. We have to be really careful, and it is important what other people's perception is of us and what we're doing. Um, there was an old um, comment, and we probably all know, your first impression is very important. Well, not just your first impression, but the continued impressions or perceptions online that you generate with your content. So I hope before you leave that you do take some pictures of yourself or with people to show where you are, because people like to see where you are and what you're doing and that you're actually growing in your field. It's like you can talk about it all you want, but unless you take a picture someplace, people don't really know what you're engaged in, how you're trying to improve what you're doing. People love to see that you actually want to grow and you're applying new knowledge. People are always watching you. You never know. I got kids watching me all over the place. I cannot go in Jacksonville, Florida, as big as Jacksonville, Florida is, go to Walmart without hearing a little voice in the distance, Coach Jackson. I'm like, oh my gosh, what am I buying in Walmart? I said, I got to be careful. It's like, oh. But it's, it, it humbles you because it makes you realize and understand the effects that you have on your community, whether you're a teacher and or a business owner or entrepreneur. So you take advantage of those opportunities and you remind yourself that I am a business owner, I do represent my business, I do represent my brand, I represent and I'm influential in my community. Whether you think you are or not, you are. SEO and Google are clinical and technical, but people are not. We are emotional beings. We create relationships, and relationships are very important. So that's why I instilled it with the young people. Shake somebody's hand, look them in the eye, talk to them, strike up a conversation. I am naturally an introvert. I, I'm actually really shy, but because I work with kids all the time and young people and adults, I have to sometimes make myself be more expressive because there's information that I like to share and that I want to share. So it's like I can't shut myself down like, well, I'm not going to talk to anybody. I'm not going to say anything. That doesn't do myself or my brand any good because I love to teach. My hashtag is my quest to teach. So if that's what I want to do, then I have to be ready to do it in all kinds of situations and circumstances. 
Instead of getting caught in unproductive stuff, get serious about stuff that you're doing. Get serious, have fun with it, but make sure you have a plan how to expand it and how to use it and, and learn as much as possible. And I used the graphic on the right hand side of motorcycle. My son started riding motorcycles not too long ago. I'm like, what? You're gonna do what? He's 26 years old, so he's an adult, he can do what he, but as a parent, it's like, okay, well let me learn as much as I can about motorcycles so I can tell him, okay, you gotta take a safety course, check. You gotta wear your helmet all the time, check. You gotta check the maintenance of the bicycle, the bike, check. But he already did all of that. So it's like, dad, yeah, I took a class. Dad, yeah, I talked to people all the time. I checked insurance, so that made me feel a little bit better. But the more knowledge you gain helps you to safeguard incidents where you get caught. And unfortunately, in this day and age, you can blog about somebody, and somebody's perception of what you're blogging or writing about or content could put them in a little tizzy, and next thing you know, you get an email from some attorney or something. It's like, okay, can you take this content down, or where did you get this information, or how did you apply this quote? So you have to be real careful and knowledgeable about the content you're creating and posting and what type of information you're conveying to the community and to the public. Thank God I have never had anybody send me any type of those letters or, or, or emails or anything like that, but I'm prepared for those instances if they ever occur, but I'm always mindful of if I use someone's quote, I have to make sure I make sure people know the resource that it came from. It's just not coming out of my mouth. Um, diversity of content creation. All of this stuff is important. One of the most important ones is visually appealing. We are visual people. When we look at stuff, we want to see pictures, we want to see video, we want to see stuff that motivates us, encourages us, excites us. Just like in this session, if I stood up here and talked like this and just lectured, some people's head would start nodding, like, oh my gosh, or some people would walk out the door. But you have to encourage and you have to engage and build some type of relationship because you want people to see you, you want people to follow you, you want people to engage with you, you want people to walk up to you and say, you did a great job, I love that blog, I love that video, I love what you're doing, you're in the community, you're involved, you're doing stuff. Because that reinforces the fact that we are actually doing something positive and something good. And getting a $20 bill, it's like, oh yeah, that is really cool, okay. <laughs> the money part is really awesome. All right, so figure out what demographics your brand is addressing. And don't be scared to diversify. Diversity is wonderful, it's awesome. Because you gotta remember the young people today are either gonna be our clients tomorrow or you're going to hire them to work for you. So when you get a chance, share some knowledge with a young person. Because the funny thing is they may not seem to listen to you, but somewhere in the back of their mind, especially when you're talking about tech and web development, web design, they do. And my children surprise me all the time. It's like, do you remember when I talked about such and such and such? And they were like, no, Dad, you are just too old. You don't know anything like that. <laughs> but then I'll hear them have a conversation with their friends, or they'll say something in passing that like, oh, I did teach you that. You did remember. So you know, they'll, they'll fool you from time to time. Who are you marketing your brand to? Expand as much as possible, but don't overwhelm yourself. I have a tendency to take on too many projects sometimes, and Aida will remind me that, okay, you do have a full-time job, you teach during the day, so when the evening is downtime and family time and, you know, taking it easy, so be sure that you have a strategy on how you're going to market what you're doing, and it's good to be accessible, but don't overextend yourself because you could end up burning yourself out. Uh, this is some wisdom I learned from Costa Rica when we went down there um, as speakers and volunteers and helping with the kids camp. Um, I'm not going to read it all, but as you can tell, take the time to study, take the time to read, take the time to learn new things and have fun with it. Sometimes it's good to get away from the technology and go to a local library and get a book or a book on tape or a book on CD or DVD and learn different things. Sometimes it's great to expand your knowledge and go to a park 
if you're like, your brain's like, okay, I need a change of atmosphere, or go to the beach, or go someplace where you can relax and kind of calm down and just focus on something else besides everyday higher order brain functions. Your brain needs to relax sometimes. We all kind of know who our content is directed to, but I always encourage expanding it. Expand your content. We have the cell phone, one of the greatest inventions in the history of mankind, and tablets and, uh, and our watches. What, what type of content are we posting? How are people using that? How are people taking advantage of it? And how are you going to apply it to everyday learning? If you notice, a lot of kids in school now, they have tablets. They have access to laptops. They have all that access to tech, but how are they using it? And I like to encourage you as digital innovators to volunteer your time at some schools if they will allow you to come in and talk to kids about what you do as a business owner and an entrepreneur and share some of those skills that they don't know now that they need, particularly at a college and university level. Because sometimes these are gonna be the young people that you offer an internship and you say, okay, come on, I want you to be an intern, and you notice they do not have the skill set that you need to help you manage your business or help you run your business, or one day you want to hire them. And then you're going into training mode. Well, I don't want to let them go because they're a good kid. They need help, so I'm going to have to teach them. So be proactive as much as possible. Have a social media plan. Create a strategic plan. Write down your plan. What are your concepts? What are your ideas? Oh, did I fade out? Okay. What are your concepts and what are your ideas? Create a plan that you can manipulate, that you can use, that you can adjust to what you're doing. So that way you know what you're doing instead of just saying, I'm going to go out and I'm going to volunteer. I'm going to save the world. All these kids need my help. Oh, there's a little old lady over there struggling with her laptop. I'm going to run over there and help her. Oh, there's another guy over there struggling with his phone. I'm going to run over there and help. That doesn't, that burns you out. Okay? It's like you can't save the world. You can help as many people as possible. But also during that course of helping people, you let people know that this is my business. I do charge for this. This is my lifestyle. So you have two trains of thoughts when you're volunteering in the community or you're helping people. But you're also a business owner. You do have to eat. Okay, you do have to keep the lights on, so it's cool to be nice, it's cool to be helpful, but you got to be realistic. Okay? Think strategically about people's perceptions as well, because it does matter, as I mentioned before. Run a social media audit. If it's not working, get rid of it. If it is working, keep it. Magnify it. Use it. If there's another version, update. Learn about it as much as possible. One of the best learning tools online now is what? What's the best learning tool online? The search engine online. YouTube, take advantage of it, use it. You can use a tablet, a phone, a watch, a lap, whatever. Use it, type in how do I do whatever. Okay, you wanna know about cars and cool stuff? Steve, he's got some awesome stuff online. Okay, another now, 20 another 20 bucks. <laughs> That's why I say all of you have a brand. If you don't know what it is, think about what you do and what you do well. All of you have a business. It's your responsibility to promote your business and how people can benefit from it. Who can see what's wrong with that slide up there? What's wrong up there? Yeah, the spelling and the grammar. Check your spelling and grammar, please, OK? Because it does you very, what's the word? It does harm when you're creating content and you have grammatical errors and spelling errors. Okay? Have someone reread, or there's software out there that, I, that will help you with your spelling and grammar. Because it takes your brand down a couple of notches if you have simple words or grammatical errors. Be very careful with that. Use quotes and be specific. Check videos, photos, and mentions. These are a couple of pictures that um, Aida and I took when we went to WordCamp San Jose. 
The top one is with the organizers. Hang out with the organizers and talk to them and the volunteers and see what's going on and how you can build your skill set. The bottom one is pictures with the kids camp. We volunteer with the kids camp. I was, and I'll be honest, was so nervous and so scared. I don't speak any Spanish. They all spoke Spanish. And I was like, thank you, Jesus, for Aida, because I don't know how I would be able to communicate. I tried my best. It just did not work. But that goes to, if you know you're going someplace, reach out and get a partner to help you. If you're going into another community and maybe you don't speak the language as well, collaborate with somebody, okay? Don't think you're just gonna bust up there, oh, I know all this information, I'm gonna, no, it doesn't work that way. You have to build a relationship first, create relationships. My hashtag is my quest to teach. Google yourself and find out what's out there about you, okay? You can do a hashtag in Twitter, you can do a hashtag in Instagram, you can do a hashtag about yourself and your business in those places to see what content is out there. The last time I gave this presentation, I had a couple of people walk up to me and say, thank you very much for doing that. This young, this other, this young man said five years ago, he made an off the color comment about something. He wasn't specific, but I understood what he was talking about. It was, a, it was an old joke. And he said it was five years ago when he did that on his phone, he hashtagged and Googled himself. He found out that that was an inappropriate comment and he wanted to take it down because he understood that that was hurting his brand. So take the opportunities to do that. You can do it, like I said, in Twitter and Instagram. If you have a hashtag or you create one or develop one, make sure you do that. Google yourself. Usually I'll do William Jackson plus social media or William Jackson comma blogger to see what's out there, what's posted out there about me. I actually found a site out there that had a link to all my YouTube videos. Had no idea where this site came from. And it wasn't inappropriate, it was just a listing of everything with a whole bunch of other people. It's like, who knew? Watch your social engagements. Who are you socially engaged with? How many of y'all have heard the term guilt by association? That is a real situation thing going on. Be careful who you take a picture with. Be careful who you're seen with, particularly as a business owner, okay? Um, you have to be mindful. Again, other people are watching you. Your local visibility, what do they see when you're walking around in the community? Do they see a business owner? Do they see an educator? Do they see an entrepreneur? What is their perception about you? Your mobile agility, what do you have posted on your phone? What do your kids have posted on their phone? Okay. What type of content are they sharing about you as a business owner? Talk to them. Find out, do you actually know what I do? Do you actually know how I put food on the table? Do you actually know how I pay bills? And get them involved as well if you can, if they're interested. Community activism, again, what are you doing in your community to promote what you're doing? Helen has, has I met Helen last year and I was just so enthralled with her writing the letters, communicating, that's a lost art, actually writing letters to people. Just imagine if, if your clients received a written letter from you saying how much you appreciate them allowing you to work with them. What, what process would go on in their mind? Oh, I actually got a letter. This is so cool, or a card. And that's very impactful. Not a digital email, not a text, a tweet, but an actual letter. So those strategies you can apply and build what you're doing and build your brand. And I encourage you, if you haven't met this young lady, take the time to talk to her about what she's doing, okay? You're a writer, content creator, publisher, you're all of that. So start seeing yourself as that. Because all of you are innovators. We're in digital environments, okay? I'm gonna date myself. I was born in 1962. I know I don't look it. That's why I teach elementary school. But I encourage everyone to do what makes you happy, what you enjoy doing, even if you, with your business. What makes you happy in your business? Expand on that. Meet other people. Talk to other people. 
Don't worry about the age. Don't worry about the diversity. Share information. This is the beautiful thing about an open source community. So much diversity in this room and the other rooms that you can just share information. Aida and I were talking before about how nice everybody is. You get smiles in the morning and handshakes and hugs and all that stuff. And then when you come to WordCamp, you get like t-shirts and, and mugs and meet different cool people. How wonderful is that? That's a great opportunity to uh, meet people and greet people. So with all of that said, we have a couple of minutes left. I want to say thank you for attending the session. I appreciate it. I hope you appreciate it. Got some good information. And uh, before we end, this young lady right here, what is your name? Marquita. Marquita had, did have her hand up to contribute. And I know there was somebody else, but I just wanted her to give her opportunity to finish or, or to say what you were going to say earlier. Right. To see ourselves and how do we think other people are. Yes, ma'am. Um, I have a blog called Smiling at the Storm. I'm okay. A baby blogger. All right. Um, and my blog is about I see myself as a perception. Okay. Um, perspective, you know, shifting perspectives for people to be able to smile through what you're going through. Right. You know, what's the word say is that all things work for the good. Yes, ma'am. So, um, and I think and I'm positive that that's how other people. Okay. Um, I've gotten that word back from people not knowing right. that, you know, there's a life on the other side. Okay. Very good. All right. Thank you. Give her a hand. <laughs> so, again, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Hope y'all woke you up and gave you some valuable information. And enjoy the rest of your WordCamp experience. So, if you have questions, I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to be here. Um, but appreciate it. And thank you very much.